everyone, it's Aunt Fernita, and we're studying Lesson 2, Escape from Jericho. The message is with our church family, we listen and learn what is important. Our memory verse this week is from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Natasha sat under a table that was covered with blankets. She typed on an old typewriter hidden inside a wooden box. The blankets and the box help soften the sound of the typewriter so it could not be heard outside. Why was she doing that? She lived in a country where books about Jesus were forbidden. But books about Jesus were important to Natasha and other Christians. So Natasha risked her life to type copies of these books so others could learn more about Jesus. One day, the police pounded on Natasha's door. They arrested her and took her away. A long time ago, the guards in Jericho wanted to arrest two men who were working for God. This is how it happened. Forty years went by after the ten spies brought back their discouraging report. Joshua, the young spy who joined Caleb in bringing a good report about the promised land, was now Israel's leader, and he was still looking for ways to encourage people. Just as Moses had done years before, Joshua sent out spies. This time, the two spies went into the promised land. Go, look over the land, Joshua told them, especially Jericho. So the men slipped into that mighty city. That night, they went to a house built on the city wall. Rahab, the woman who lived there, answered their knock. She knew they were Israelites, yet she invited them inside. Now everyone in Jericho, including Rahab, knew about the Israelites. Everyone knew the Lord fought Israel's battles, and that scared the king of Jericho and his army. But instead of calling the soldiers, Rahab talked to the men. Then she hid the two Israelites on her roof under some stalks of flax. When the king's soldiers came knocking, Rahab swung the door wide open. Bring the men who have come to spy on us, they demanded. The men left here a short time ago, she lied. Go quickly and you will surely catch them. The soldiers dashed away looking for the spies. About that same time, the gates of Jericho clanked shut. The city settled down to sleep. When all was quiet, Rahab crept onto the roof. I know the Lord has given the land to your people, she told the spies. We have heard how he dried up the Red Sea for you. Everyone is afraid. Our courage has melted. You know I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sign that you will show kindness to my family. We will, the men promised. Our lives for your lives. You don't tell what we are doing, and you will be safe when the Lord gives us the land. So Rahab took a red rope to let the spies down from her window. After we have gone, tie this rope in your window, the spies told her. When we take the city, we will save you and the family members inside the house with you, but the rope must be in the window. Rahab watched as the men climbed down the rope and disappeared into the darkness. She carefully tied the cord to the window. Deep in her heart, she knew that she had discovered something very important. The God of Israel was the true God. He would be her God from that day on.
Sister Chana. We came from Taiwan to help tell the people in the big city of Tokyo about Jesus. One day, my father called, Yana, Chana, I forgot the cell phone in the car. Can you go get the cell phone for me? Chana and I ran to the elevator and pushed the button to go down. Suddenly, the lights went out and the elevator stopped moving. It was very dark inside the elevator, and we were scared. We tried to open the door with our hands, but it wouldn't move. Let's pray, I said to Chana. God will help us open the door. And so we closed our eyes, even though it was very dark in the elevator, and prayed, Dear Jesus, Father asked us to get the cell phone, and now we're stuck in the elevator. Please help us get out of the elevator, Jesus. After we said amen, we turned to the door, and with almost no force at all, the door opened, and we were able to get out safely. We got the cell phone and ran all the way home. We told father and mother what had happened, and then we all praised to God together. Father told us that the doors were made to be impossible to open with our own hands. God must have sent an angel to help us open the door. I'm glad God heard us even in the dark elevator. Thank you for helping children around the world learn about Jesus. My son has seen so many. I have children's salmon. The title of my salmon is Brass Can Move Mountain. We are going to talk about a man called Alejandro. Alejandro was a farmer, he was an Adventist too. One day he went to cook lunch. The wind came and built the fire. The fire spread to his barley field. The fire spread to neighbor's barley field. Alejandro didn't know what to do. He decided to kneel down and pray. When he stood up, the old fire was off. 
Alejandro the neighbors were shocked because God had done many miracles to Alejandro. Alejandro preached to many people. Many people became Adventists. Many people were baptized. Alejandro built six churches in his village. My sermon teaches children we should pray always and God will answer our prayer. Say Amen. Amen.
Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Hiding from God. The memory verse is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Today's message is God still loves us and will forgive us if we are truly sorry when we do something wrong. Have you ever done something wrong and been afraid to say that you did? Adam and Eve must have felt that way. It probably happened like this. Adam and Eve were happy in their garden home. The best part of the day was the evening, when God often came and talked with them face to face. On the seventh day Sabbath, they spent the whole day with God. They probably never wanted Sabbath to end. God told them to enjoy every tree in the garden except one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, you must never eat the fruit. If you do, you will surely die. One day, Eve was walking through the garden and came near the tree. As she looked at it, a beautiful creature, a serpent, began to talk to her. Is it true God has told you that you can't eat from any tree in this garden? The serpent asked. Eve knew she should go away from that place, but she didn't. Instead, she answered the snake. God told us we can eat from all the trees in the garden except this one. We are not to eat its fruit. We are not even to touch it. If we do, we will die. The snake answered, You won't die. You will be as smart as God is. Eating the fruit will make you wise. Eve reached out and touched the fruit. Nothing happened. Then she took some fruit and bit into it. It tasted good. She picked more and gave it to Adam. When he knew Eve had eaten some, he ate some too. As soon as Adam took a bite, something happened to them. They realized that they were naked. They were ashamed and afraid. They knew they had done wrong. They ran to a fig tree and used its leaves to cover themselves. That evening when they heard God walking through the garden, they hid. They were ashamed to meet him. When God found them, he asked, Why are you hiding? We heard you in the garden, Adam told God and we were afraid. God knew what they had done, and he was sad. They would have to face the consequences. He told them that they would have to leave the beautiful garden. They would begin to get old and eventually die. Life outside the garden would be hard. Weeds would grow. There would be thorns they would have to work hard to grow their food, and everything else would die too, the plants and the animals. Even though Adam and Eve had chosen to disobey him, God did not leave them alone. He told them about his plan to make things right. He would send his son into the world. His son would die and take the blame for all the things they did wrong. Adam and Eve were very sad and very sorry for what they had done. God forgave Adam and Eve for disobeying him. He will forgive you too when you do wrong, if you ask him, and if you are really sorry. He wants to help you do what is right, and he wants you to be ready to go to heaven when Jesus comes again.
Glad you could join us once again at Parker's Puzzle. My name is Mr. Richie, and this is my trusty partner, Parker. Hello, everyone. And today, we're going to figure out what is our clue for, well, for the puzzle. And it's inside of this container. And let's see what it is. <gasps> Can you tell what this is? It's a cow. And cows give milk. Now I wonder, Parker, how could this be a clue for today's puzzle? Stay with us, and you'll see how this fits into Parker's puzzle. Hey everybody, welcome once again to Parker's Puzzle. Today, for our exercise portion of the show, we're actually gonna be working on our abs. That means this section right here and our legs, our lower section, so that we can have strong and healthier bodies as well. And to begin with, we're gonna do something that may be really fun. You have to have some space right in front of your TV or some space in the ground where you're not about to hit anything. What I want you to do is, with my assistance here, right, I want you to uh, go ahead and lay down just like this, facing down. By the way, today I have some great helpers with me. I have right in front of me, Bethany. Right behind me, right here is Catherine, Nana Catherine. And I also have Cameron, wave your hand over there. And I have Michael and Ryan and Daniel. Yeah, all right. So for this, we call it the warm stretch because we feel like a little warm when we're doing it, all right, for the warm up. So what you wanna do is, you're gonna try to squiggle as if you were warm. And I'm gonna count to 10, all right? You guys ready? And begin. One, and two, and three, and four. And this really gives you a good workout because it gets your body going in every different position. And 10. Wasn't that fun? That was awesome, guys. All right, now turn so that you are on your back. You two at home, go ahead and turn so that you're on your back. And what you want to do is you're going to lift up your legs and cross them just like this. These are just regular, traditional crunches. Are you guys ready to do crunches? Yeah! yeah. All right, let's do 10 crunches. You ready? And let's go. One and two and three. Make sure you're crunching your stomach every time you're doing this and not pulling on your neck, but instead trying to get this nice and tough. That was good, guys. That was really good. Now. Imagine that you're riding a bicycle. And if you're riding a bicycle, you must be doing what, guys? Pedal. You must pedal. That is right. I heard it from back here, you know? So you're gonna go ahead and lay on your very back and you're gonna try to pedal. And let's pedal till 15 this time, all right? Here we go. And pushing. One, and two, and three. And you wanna make sure that you are pushing your legs versus kicking them, all right? The best you can, the best you can. And 10, and 11, and 12, and 13, and 14, and 15. Oh, that was so tiring. Remember, if you feel like you're out of breath, get some water, stop, you know, and then come back and do it again. The next exercise is a stretch. So we can stretch our stomachs nice and long. So I'm gonna ask my helpers here to turn from their mats and face down once again. And this one we call the seal stretch because it reminds us of an animal that is a seal that looks just like this or moves on its stomach, all right? So put your hands right by your sides, everybody, all right? And you're gonna try to lift up as high as you can without lifting your hips from the ground. That's this section right here, your hips, all right? Here we go. Everybody ready? And push all the way up. I'm gonna count to 10 and see if we can hold it all the time. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. You just feel a nice push right underneath you. And down, everybody. Good, you can face forward once again. Now, there's something really important that I gotta tell you. And they're gonna play with some bubbles, I believe, because you know we told them that they could, plus they're pretty. But I gotta tell you this, while they're doing this, God made you special. You were wonderfully and specially made. So because of that, you have to remember to always work out your body 
and always make sure that you become one of these people that are very fit, that run everywhere. If mommy and daddy tell you to uh, go do something for them, you can run instead of walk, or you can jump, you know, or you can go up the steps as long as you're safe. Because by doing that, you're honoring God. Go outside, play a little. Don't stay inside the whole time. I remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dies on the cross so that you may have this privilege. He loves you, and so do we. I'll see you next time, guys, in Parker's Puzzle. Is smiling exercise? Kids smile. Do they move muscles? Then Parker says smiling is exercise. Do kids know how many muscles kids move when they smile? 17, 45, or 12? <laughs>
uh, the oil and the seasoning is nice and even, okay? And let that cook there for a little bit. Let it cook, let it cook, okay? Get yourself a plate, and then this is an easy thing to make. Tofu is so good for you. It's a better alternative uh, for, than, than eggs many times. Um, and it's something that you can share with everybody and say, hey, I made this, and it's also a healthy thing. And then after that, it's time to eat. So I'm gonna let this cook for a while, and I have some already pre-made. Go ahead and pull out some bread, and uh, uh, we're going to eat this. I don't know if I have any plates here, but we're going to, there we go, I have some plates right there. I'm gonna keep staring. Take some bread, would you? And start serving yourselves from that tofu. You can adorn that with some uh, leaves and some uh, tomato, and it's gonna be nice and good. And I think that's it. That's it, our tofu scramble for us. Now kids, you wanna say bye to everybody? All right, enjoy your tofu, enjoy your breakfast food, and we'll see you next time here at the kitchen of Parker's Puzzle. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know he's always yeah. being very polite no, no, no. to me, this and uh, he's so kind incredible. to our son. No, no, no. Hey, hey no, sorry, no, no. the kids are here, and I'll have to you. go, I have okay? To tell you. Bye. Bye. Hi, kids. Whoa, I, I really don't like calls like that. Someone had something not so nice to say about a boy in my neighborhood. You know, we have to be very careful about what we say about each other. Our words can be kind and encouraging and help heal a person. Or they can be harsh and damaging and destroy someone. Have you ever overheard someone talking about you? It's not very nice now, is it? We call that gossip. Ouch! And it's very hurtful. It might ruin a person's reputation. And it's like dissecting someone's character. Taking them apart piece by piece. Sometimes people say things that they wouldn't dare to say if you were right there. The truth is, we're all guilty of it. There are not many of us who have never said anything that we shouldn't have about someone else. The Bible has something to say about gossip. He calls it backbiting, and it makes it clear that people who continue to do this cannot go to heaven. You know, I have a little rule that helps me with this. Would you like to know what it is? Well, the next time you are tempted to say something about someone when they're not there, close your eyes for a moment and pretend that they're standing right there. Then ask yourself a question. Would I still say what I was going to say if they were right here? It is much harder to say things to a person's face than behind their back. So do you think you can try that, kids? With Jesus' help, you can. Oh, and just one more thing. Uh, it's okay to spread good words about people. If you want to say something about someone, well then try saying good and encouraging and uplifting things. Something that will make them happy when they hear about it. Do kids know what makes milk spoil? Is it bacteria? Milk cartons? Spoiled cows? Kids stay tuned for the answer. that even milk from nice cows spoils because of A, bacteria. Humans have thousands of bacteria on human skin. Mr. Ritchie says humans have something else like bacteria inside. Do kids know what it is? Here comes Mr. Ritchie with the answer. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Good! 
Excellent. Well, welcome back once again to uh, Parker's Puzzle. Guys, I was thinking, you know, I really like breakfast. And, uh, how about you, Parker? Do you breakfast. like breakfast? Mm -hmm. It's really good food for you, isn't it? Mm, breakfast. You know, at breakfast, uh, I, I, I get my food for the day and I get my energy. And, you know, I, right now I like to eat lots of fruit, lots of healthy stuff. But, you know, when I was a baby, you know what I ate for breakfast? What, what do you think I had for breakfast? Milk. That's right. My mom would take me in her arms and she would feed me milk and I would be the happiest baby in the world. Now I have something to show you, everyone. Um, you see what I have here? What is this? Milk. Yes, and it's fresh milk. It was just milk from the cow. And right now it's, it's in its perfect state. It's ready to, well, to be good. But what happens if I take this milk and I, uh, I don't know, I, I, I let it be and I don't pay attention to it and maybe I leave it outside the refrigerator, then what happens? Does it keep staying good or does it change? It changes. It changes, that's right. And I'm going to show you a, the same kind of milk, but it looks a little bit different. Look here. Does this look good? No, it's gone bad. As a matter of fact, if anyone were to drink this, they would get really, really sick. Because you see, it has, you know, bacteria that's been coming in there. It's multiplied itself many, 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 many times over. And now, no matter how much you try, I could even shake this or try to do things to it. This, this milk could not go back to its original state. It is no longer good. Now, why would I show you this? And why would I tell you this? Well, you see, this milk kind of makes me think of us. See, we were created to be like the first example. We were created to be perfect. We were created to have all of our capacities, physically, mentally, spiritually, everything. We were supposed to, you know, be the very, very image of God. But something went wrong. Satan, he decided that he was going to come and he's going to change things. And he's going to make us rebel. And that rebellion, rebellion kind of changes from inside. Let's read from the Bible and see what, what are some of the things that the Bible, the Word of God says about this, everyone. So, Abby, you'll be my first reader. Would you mind reading um, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27 for us? Then God said... Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. See, it says here that God created man to his own image. And guys, is God perfect? Yes. Yes, he is pure. So we were created to be pure. And then that bacteria that goes in there and changes the milk, well, well, it's like sin that came into our lives. And it changed us. And remember how he said the milk cannot change itself? It cannot go back to what it was? Well, that's a bit like us. Let's continue reading. This time, though, let's read John chapter 3, verses 3 through 5. And Tamia, I want you to please read that for everybody. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Yes, it's so, so Jesus here is talking to Nicodemus. He's saying, well, how can I be born again? How can I go back to, to the way I was meant to be? Well, Jesus said, you need to be born again. And, and he's, he's asking, well, I, I can't go back into my mom's womb and then come back out. I can't do that. He didn't quite understand. But Jesus was meaning that he needs to go through, through, through him, through Jesus Christ himself, and give his life to him and say, look, God, I am yours again. And maybe go through baptism and, and then once again go back to being what you were meant to be. Do you guys understand? By ourselves we cannot, but with Jesus' help, yes. 
You know, we can because our nature is already rotten. Our nature is already corrupted. Now, you know, we believe many things. We believe that only Jesus can change us. We believe that we have to go through him to do this miracle. We believe that he wants to uh, bring us back to the way we were because our nature is to be bad now. Our nature is to not follow all the good stuff and have, you know, uh, all the good thoughts and all the uh, good ways in which God wants us to live. Because, you know, Adam and Eve fell, and because of them, well, then you and I have fallen as well. But the good news is that Jesus Christ has come to pick us up and to change our very nature once again. You know, in the Bible, it even says, uh, there's a text in, that says, look, a leopard cannot change its spots. A leopard is like a cat animal, and a leopard cannot change the way it is. Well, it says, well, neither can you, who are used to doing bad things, can simply change by yourselves. But with Jesus' help, yes, we can. Let's read one more text today. And I'm going to ask Tiffany to please read Psalms chapter 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yes. Here the psalmist is saying, God, I want you to create in me a new heart. So change me. Take me back to what you wanted me to be. You guys understand? He's saying, look, I have to go to Jesus and I have to make a 180 turnaround. And I have to ask myself, well, what would Jesus do in this situation or that situation? What would Jesus do? What would he say? What would he look like? What, what would be the things that Jesus want me to do? And that is like saying, God, I'm giving myself to you, my decisions and everything. Because only you can turn me. Only you can turn my nature. Now, let's pray to our God so that he can help us do just that. Put your hands together. Close your eyes and bow your heads. And let's pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Help me. Help me. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart. I know that I am bad by nature. I know that I am bad by nature. But you are good. But you are good. And you can change me. And you can change me. So thank you. So thank you. I love you. I love you. In your name. In your name. Amen. Amen. We are naturally bad. And it's important that we remember that, you know, that cannot be changed by ourselves, but Jesus Christ can. And we have to praise His name and give Him thanks for that always. He came and died on the cross so that we may have that very chance. So go to Jesus. He can change your heart. We don't understand all that there is to it, but we do understand that part. And that, my friends, is just another piece to this wonderful, marvelous puzzle. Thank you for joining us today. And we'll see you next time here at Parker's Puzzle.